everyone, in this video, we are going to create a basic window using SDL2. This will include being able to accept key presses, the escape key, and the F1 key. The escape key will cancel small game from running, while the F1 key will toggle between windowed and full screen mode. I think this is going to be really cool. This is going to be a exciting video, and we're going to dive right into some basics of using SDL2. So grab your favorite drink and let's get into things. In a previous video, I demonstrated how to download and set up the SDL2 game development library on your Windows machine for use with the C Lion editor. So in this video, I'm just going to jump straight into creating a new project and getting started with SDL2 and C. So go into new project, highlight C executable and create a, or give this thing a name. I'm going to be calling it SDL2, SDL2 basic window. And we're going to be using C17. Go ahead and hit create. And we get our beautiful editor showing up here with our default main program. So let's go ahead and wipe out the hello world along with the include stdio.h. And let's go ahead and create a folder called CMake modules, CMake underscore modules. And within that folder, let's create a new file and we'll call it find sdl2.cmake. I'm going to cut and paste the same find sdl2.cmake file that we created in the previous video. And then we'll hop into our cmake lists.txt and let's configure everything. So we're going to set the cmake module path to be cmake sourcer slash cmake modules. And then we are going to set the path to our sdl2 library, mingw library. So I put a little to-do note here. If you download the project and clone it, is that you want to set this to wherever you installed the SDL2 MinGW library on your machine. And then we want to find package SDL2. And then we want to include our directories, the SDL2 include dir variable. And then finally, after we add executable, we want to add the line. We want to target link libraries, project name, and SDL2 library. That should be everything we need to make or everything we need to set up. So let's go into our program. All right. So first we'll include the SDL.h header. And remembering that our main function has to be using the traditional int argc char star argv. And SDL2 under the covers, the libraries sort of override this main function so that you can, it swaps in depending on the platform you are compiling for, it'll swap in the correct main entry point for that platform. Okay, so we are going to create two variables here. We're going to be creating a SDL window, we'll just call it window, and an SDL renderer pointer. And we'll call that, oops, we'll call that renderer. And let's first uh, reload our CMake file changes so that we kind of get code, code completion, okay? And we're gonna create another variable called quit, which is what we'll be using in our main event loop. And an SDL event to contain the event that SDL will process during the main event loop. Similar to most C or C++ libraries, SDL2 is event driven. So there are a few events that we'll need to listen for and process once we capture those events. All right, so first things first, we're just gonna call SDL underscore init. And this is the main initialization method for SDL. And we'll just use the flag SDL init everything. So this will make sure that it, SDL2 will initialize the submodules for video, for audio, uh, for events, networking, etc. So basically everything that we want to use. 
And then we're going to create a window using, using SDL underscore create window. And we need to give it a title. So we are just going to call it SDL two basic window. And then the next two parameters are the X and Y position where we want this window to be created. And so SDL two offers a awesome variable called SDL window pose underscore centered and SDL window pose centered again. And so basically this will center your window in the middle of the screen, which is really cool, really handy. And then we give this a width and a height. So I'm going to start with an 800 by 600 window. And then finally, we just have flags that we need to pass in. We're just going to be using SDL underscore window underscore shown. And so that means that as soon as this window is created, SDL will present it to our screen. Okay. So if window is equal to null, then go to cleanup and quit, which we haven't created yet. Okay. Next up, we have a next up. Let's create the renderer that we're going to need to use for drawing pixels to our screen, game dev pixels. We, we got to love that. Everyone wants to do that. Okay. But first get my face out of there. Okay. So we assign the renderer to a function called SDL underscore create renderer. And we want to pass in the window that we just created minus one so that SDL will do the work of finding the correct video device to use or render a device to use and some basic flags. We will just be using SDL underscore renderer underscore accelerated for this demo. And again, we'll do the same kind of check if renderer equals null, then go to clean up and quit. And I'll demonstrate why I'm using a go to in a minute, but first let's put a main loop together here and then we'll walk through the code again some more. So while quit is false. So while not quit, which we've assigned it to be zero starting out while quit is false, we want to call a method called SDL underscore poll event. And so this will pull SDLs event queue and store any event found into the event variable. And so while it doesn't equal to zero, that means while there is an event in the poll event queue, we are just going to process the type of event. Okay. So in the case of SDL quit, we set quit equal to one and then break. When there's no more SDL two events waiting in the event queue, then we proceed with updating and rendering our game or updating and drawing our game. So what we can do is call a method called SDL underscore set render draw color. And this will basically just set the background color on our renderer device. So render, and then let's give it a RGB value, RGBA value, sorry, of zero, zero, two, fifty five, two, fifty five. So as parameters, we can give it a integers from zero to two fifty five for the RGBA color slots. We will clear the renderers background to a blue color. Now we will call SDL underscore render clear and give it the renderer again. And then finally we will call SDL underscore render present. And then we'll give ourselves a really slight delay of 10 milliseconds. And this is just to help transfer control of our program back to the operating system, just in case there's something else that wants to interfere with their application. It's kind of nice to hand it back and not starve our platform operating system from being able to function correctly with other programs. After this whole loop quits, we now create our cleanup and quit label that is being used for our go-to. And we call SDL destroy renderer and SDL destroy window. And then finally SDL underscore quit will 
quit all of the SDL subsystems that we initialized during SDL init. So why am I using a goto variable? Maybe some people are asking about that. Basically, what you can get into is a situation, a potential situation where you've created the window properly, but you run into a error creating the renderer. So if you just exit the program at this point, then this window handle is still in memory, even though the renderer one didn't properly create. So what I typically like to do is just make sure that I'm destroying everything. And so I created this mechanism of using go to to make sure that in any kind of error, drop down to this part of the function and call destroy render and destroy window to make sure things are cleaned up and then calling SDL underscore quit. Okay, so the reason we're structuring things this way in the main event loop, let's talk about that for a minute, is that we want to create it continuously going until we decide to quit it. So in our case, we are only quitting it when we send a SDL quit event to our event queue, which I'll demonstrate shortly. What we're then doing is we're working with multiple buffers. So SDL2 is very similar to some of the traditional game development libraries in that there's multiple buffers in memory, what's called what's called a buffer in memory. And a buffer is basically just a scratch pad for drawing all of the objects in our game. If you maybe it's easier to think of it that way. So we've kind of got two canvases to work with. One is usually a what's called a scratch canvas. So this is one that we are constantly updating every frame of our game. And the other canvas is the one that is continuously being presented all at once to the screen. This is a technique often called double buffering. SDL2 does things this way in order to help create the illusion of very smooth and very high speed animation which works really beautifully. Go ahead and run this. So don't forget to copy the sdl2.dll file into your sdl2 basic window cmake-build-debug folder. And now if we hit the run button, we should be able to play it. And here we have our basic blue window coming up, which is fantastic, which is fantastic. So the SDL quit event that we're listening for is sent when we try to close the window or stop our debugger. So in this case, I'll close the window with the X. It stops the program running. Okay, so I promised during the intro that we would allow key presses in order to also be able to handle the keyboard key. So what we're going to do is add a new event type in this main loop here. So if we receive the SDL underscore quit event, then we assign quit to one. And similarly, if we receive a SDL key up event, which is what happens when you press and release a key, we then let's process the exact key that is being released. So we'll look at the event dot key dot key sim dot sim. All right, and so for a case, we'll look at SDL, we'll test it against SDL K escape, which is the escape key. And if we hit the escape key, then we will assign quit to one and break just like we did before. And let's make sure to close off the break on that switch. And let's try running it again. Okay, so now if I hit the escape key, it should also close, which it does. Awesome. So I also promised that we would be looking at toggling between full screen and windowed mode, which is pretty cool here too. Really easy to do with SDL. So back at the top before we create things, let's create a few new variables. We'll store our width to be 800 and our height to be 600. And then we'll also create a new int to store our windowed or, win windowed or not windowed. So in this case, windowed being assigned to one means that we want it windowed. Whereas if it's zero, then we want it full screen. Okay, so back down in our event loop, we now listen for another event, and this one is called SDL underscore window event underscore size changed, which is triggered whenever the size of the window changes. 
And so what we want to do is snag the event.window.data1 value, which is our width, our new width, and our height would be event.window.data2. And then we call SDL render present just to refresh everything. And up here back in our create render where we had 800 by 600, let's replace 800 with W and 600 with H. Okay, so by default, we're gonna be in windowed mode. Okay, so then what I wanna do also is listen for the F1 key. So right after the case that we just created for the escape key, let's create one for the F1 key. So SDLK underscore F1. And what we wanna do is toggle the windowed value. So windowed equals not windowed, so negate. We wanna negate whatever the current value of windowed is. So if we are going from full screen to windowed, then what we wanna do is call SDL set window full screen of our window handle to be false. Okay, otherwise we wanna call the same function, set window full screen of the window to SDL true. So if you're going from full screen to windowed mode, then call set window full screen to false. And if we are going from windowed to full screen, then set window screen to SDL true. And remembering to close that case with a break. And let's try it out. Okay, so we get a, it starts off in windowed mode. Now if I hit escape, we get out of it. And I'll start it again. If I hit F1, it then does its inner magic in order to create a full screen window. And if I hit F1 again, it should reset itself back to our application. Ta-da! That's really cool. And there you have it, everyone. That's our first SDL2 window application running. I timed it underneath 30 minutes. So maybe this video will be between 20 and 30 minutes, depending on what happens during editing. And yeah, you'll have a basic window up and running, being able to accept keyboard keys and just running a basic SDL2 event loop. I think this was a really cool video. I hope you found it entertaining to go through and helpful, of course. Stick around for more videos in this, I'm not going to call this series. Stick around for more videos like this, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, everyone. Peace. Thank you.